Welcome to my guide for the Set A Test 2 CGP Sats Buster Paper. What I recommend you do is give yourself 10 minutes absolute maximum to do this test. Uh, treat it as if it was an actual test. Come back and have a look at how I've done it. Uh, see if you've got the marks and also see where you need to improve for next time. Okay, number one, 304.5 divided by 100. You should know by now that if you are going to divide by 100, the whole number is going to need to move two spaces, because that's how many zeros we've got, to the right, because when we divide, a number gets smaller. So in this case, 304.5, two spaces to the right, the whole number is going to move. You're going to end up, if I line it up carefully, we've got three point, the decimal point never moves. The next number is zero, then four, then five. So 304.5 divided by 100, that whole number has shifted two spaces across. So the three was once in the hundreds, it's now in the units. And if you think about it, that makes sense. If you have 300 divided by 100, it's going to be around three. So because we've got just over 300, it's close to three, but just slightly over. 3.045 is your answer. Similarly, with this one, 3.045 times something is 3,045. Well, using your knowledge of place value, if you were to slide all these digits three spaces across, that would give us 3,045. So if we're going to slide it three spaces across, you need to know that that number is 1,000 because the number of zeros dictates how many spaces it moves. So if it's moved three spaces, your number should have three zeros. Number two, circle the factors of 52. A factor, you should know, is a number that goes into that number 52 uh, perfectly without any remainders. So does one fit into 52? Yep, one. there's 52 ones in 52, so that's one of them. Does three fit? Well, if you carry on with your three times table, if you get to 36 and you add another three, you get to 39, you keep going, you'll find that 52 isn't in three times table, so that's not one of them. 13, if we were to count in 13s, two lots of 13 are 26, four lots therefore are 52, so it does fit perfectly. Similarly with 19, if you count up in 19s, 19, 38, next one is 57, so it, that one doesn't fit either. This is a good method by the way, if you can't do that in your head, uh, writing the multiples of that number until you get to your required answer or above it or below it, uh, just so you'd see if it fits is a good way of doing it. Okay, number three, you need a ruler and a protractor for this. So obviously I can't do that with you, but I'll do my best to answer the question for you. Rosa is making a patchwork blanket. Each rectangular patch will measure 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters. Using a ruler and a protractor, draw an accurate 60 millimeter by 40 millimeter rectangle. One side has been drawn. So Obviously, if you're going to measure that, that would be 60. You would use your ruler then and your protractor to make sure that you get an absolutely perfect right angle. The right angle is what they're going to be measuring. So imagine you've used the protractor. You've got it perfect. I'll do the best I can. You then get your ruler and draw a 40 millimeter line there. Obviously, that's not going to do the job you would use a ruler. And at the other side, you do exactly the same thing. Got your right angle in there. And then ensure that you've got right angles at the top as well. Very important. As you know, rectangle has to have four right angles in it. And then join it up. Number four. On a roundabout at a playground, there are eight bars with equal angles between them, as shown below. What is the size of each angle? Right, this is important. You need to know how many degrees are in a full circle. Now you should know that that equals 360 degrees. So that's how much that entire circle has got in its interior angle. In order to find these individual angles here then, because they're chopped into eight equal parts, if we divide 360 by eight, we should get our answer. So 360 divided by eight, what we could do is half it, half it, and half it again to save us doing some working out. So half of 360 would be divided by 2, that would be 180. Half it again, that would be 90, and half it again, we've got 45. So 8 times 45 makes 360. Each one of these is worth 45 degrees. Ozzy and Ralph played darts. For every 5 points that Ozzy scored, Ralph scored 7. The total number of points scored was 60. So how many points did Ralph score? 
So there are a couple of ways of doing this. Some people like to visualize it and they would write it out. So you could say, okay, well, Aussie's got five points and then Ralph scored seven and they keep going. And you can keep adding them up until you get to 60. What I did was slightly differently and some people might do it this way. I did write, well, every time they play um, Aussie and Ralph total 12 points and they keep going that way. So how many 12s fit into 60? Well, you should know that five times 12 equals 60 so they'll have played five rounds in that was the way i thought about it in my head anyway if they played five rounds well in those five rounds aussie would have scored five times five so aussie has got 25 points and ralph will have seven times five so ralph will have 35 points and if you just check do they make 60 yep they do so how many points did Ralph score? You know that Ralph scores seven per round, if you like, and they've played five rounds. So Ralph has scored seven times five, which is 35 points. Okay, number six, complete this calculation giving your answer as a mixed number. First things first, if we look at the fraction we've got here, we can't add these two together because they have different denominators. So what we need to do is convert them so they have the same denominator. So what we need to do is look and say, right, well, What's in the 8 times table that's also in the 10 times table? And a quick way of doing that is timesing them together. So 8 times 10 is 80. So if I can get my fractions to have 80ths, then they should be able to be added together. So what do I need to do to 3 eighths to turn it into 80ths? Well, 3 times 10 is 30, and 8 times 10 is 80. So we've got our 80ths at the bottom there. Now, what do I need to turn tenths into 80ths? I need to times the whole thing, top and bottom, by 8. So we put a plus there. 9 times 8 is 72. And 8 times 10 is 80. Now we can add them together because these are equivalent fractions to these ones, but they have the same denominator. Okay, now we just need to add them together. So 30 80ths add 72 80ths is 102 80ths because remember we never add the denominator together. Now that's not our answer, it says leave your answer as a mixed number and at the moment we've got an improper fraction. So what we need to do is to convert this to a mixed number. Uh, what I would recommend doing is thinking, well how many 80ths do I need to make one whole? So obviously the answer would be 80 80ths, that makes one whole. So if I subtract 80 80ths from 102 80ths, I get my one whole, that's where that's gone. And what's left is 22 80ths. So that is now a mixed number. And we can't take any more whole numbers out of that. That is what we've got, our whole number and our remaining fraction. It doesn't say simplify that, so you don't need to fiddle with the fraction. You can just leave it as that. So our answer is 1 whole and 22 80ths. Okay, number 7. Ozzy, Rosa and Ralph are comparing their comic collections. The number of comics that Ozzy has is C. Rosa has four times as many comics as Ozzy, and Ralph has five more comics than Rosa. Write an expression that shows how many comics Ralph has. This is just simple algebra. So let's start back at the beginning. We know that Ozzy has C amount of comics, but Rosa has four times as many. So we need four C. That's how we write that in algebra, four lots of C. Ralph has five more comics than Rosa, so he has five more than Rosa's got, which is 4C. So all Ralph's got is 4C, which is how much Rosa has got, plus five more. So that's the expression, 4C plus five. Ozzy has 12 comics. How many comics does Ralph have? So all we need to do now is use the expression that we've got. This tells us how many comics Ralph has got in relation to Ozzy because he's got C. So if Ozzy has 12, all we need to do is substitute the number 12 where our letter C is. So 4C is the same as 4 times C. So if C is 12, 4 times 12 is 48, plus 5 is 53. Number 8. Ralph is cutting a carpet to fit his hallway. A plan of his hallway is shown below. Calculate the perimeter and area of his hallway. So if you remember, perimeter is if you go around the edge of the entire shape, add up all that distance, that will give you a perimeter. So let's start with that. Look at what we've got. Well, we've got nine, we've got four, we've got a couple of missing spaces. Look, we've got something missing here, uh, something missing here, 
and something missing here. So if we can find out these numbers, we should be able to just add them up and get a perimeter. Looking at this first bit then, so we have 9 here and 4 here. Well, we know that this top bit is exactly the same as this bit here, so that's going to be 4. Uh, this gap here, right, well, if we look at this whole length here, that's 9. We've got 1 here, 5 here, and then we've got that gap. So if we look and we draw a whole new line here, just so that I can visualize it for you. We have 1 plus another 5. Now this bit here has to total 9. This has to be the same. Okay, so we have 1 plus another 5. That makes 6. So this little bit here that we're missing is 3 meters. Because 3, add 5, add 1, make 9. And finally, this last bit that we're missing here, this is going to be exactly the same as the bottom here, so that is 7 metres. All we've got to do now is add up all the sides. So we have 9 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 7. So that's obviously a long equation. Let's see if we can uh, get rid of a few things. So we have 7 and 3, number bonds to 10, that's 10. Uh, have we got any more? Yep, 9 and 1. That also makes another 10. Uh, now we haven't. So 7 and 4 is 11. Uh, 4 and 5 is 9. 11 and 9 is 20. So we add them up. We have 40 meters. In order to find the area, we need to do the total base times the total height. Now, because this is quite confusing, what they've done actually is given us a bit of a clue and put these dashes down here. And if you look, we've got two quadrilaterals here. So these quadrilaterals, all we need to do to find the area of a quadrilateral is base times height. So we have the base here, it's 4 times 9. So this area here, this rectangle, is 4 times 9, which is 36 meters squared. And this rectangle here is 5 times 7. So 5 times 7 is 35. If we add them together, we get 71 meters squared. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that really helps me out. And I'll hopefully see you soon in the next video. Thanks.